Hi, my name is Steve McAllister. Uh, I started the company Sepro, what has become Sepro Systems in the 1980s. And we now offer many products, but one of them, and probably the, one of the most interesting products we offer is peristaltic pumps. And so I'd like to spend a little time with you about discussing about uh, the advantages of peristaltic pumps in general, and more specifically, uh, the advantage of dealing with the Sepro Parasaltic Pump. We get a lot of questions on our website about peristaltic pumps. One of the best sources of information that you can download from the site is this brochure. Uh, but I'd like to spend a little bit of time discussing some of the more frequently asked questions about our pumps. Do we need to prime peristaltic pump? Well, no, we don't need to prime peristaltic pumps. They can actually lift the fluid they are pumping from as much as nine meters below the surface that they're placed at. This is under ideal circumstances. Normally, peristaltic pumps do not need to be primed. What are the spare parts? Spare parts. Well, it's very interesting that the only part that touches the fluid being processed is the hose. And so the hose is the principal spare part, although each time a hose is changed, it's also usually necessary to change the lubricant that keeps the hose lubricated. Can your pumps run dry? Our pumps can run dry indefinitely. There is no parts in there that are damaged by not pumping fluid. Is it possible to use peristaltic pump for dosing applications where precise flow is required. So peristaltic pumps are in a class of pumps called positive displacement pumps. And so they're very, very useful for precise dosing applications because each rotation of the rotor uh, corresponds to a very, very precise amount of fluid. What is the viscosity limit for the product? So, from an engineering perspective, we can handle up to about a million centipoise, but uh, for a subjective feeling for how these pumps, what materials these pumps can handle, they can handle molasses, very, very thick glue, very thick slurry, often up to 80% solids. Anything else that we didn't cover? Well. Uh, one thing we didn't cover was that um, these pumps can run in either direction. Uh, they can run um, clockwise or counterclockwise, which is very useful for cleaning them out or re uh, cleaning out um, blockages and so forth. But I'd also like to add at this time something that you won't hear from many, many, many peristaltic pump manufacturers. That is the disadvantage of peristaltic pumps, particularly as these pumps get larger in size. I think you can see from this very small tube that it, when it is squeezed, the, at the fold point is very, very high stress and each of the fold points, and you must squeeze a conventional hose very, very hard to make it seal. And this causes the hose, to wear, hose or tube to wear out. What we've been working on for the last almost four years is what we call our elliptical hose technology, where We've been able to make the side walls at the fold points thinner, reducing the stress of the ceiling and also make the top and bottom walls thicker so that we have the ability to resist vacuum. And you can't see this on the video, but as I squeeze here, there's a perceptible difference in force required to seal this tube as opposed to the conventional tube. This is a section of hose from a conventional 100 millimeter peristaltic pump. And as you can see, the walls are quite thick. 
as a consequence, it becomes very much more difficult to fold this hose and seal it. In fact, the stresses at these points become very, very large. What this causes is a buildup of heat, which in turn causes a failure of the hose. Our 100 millimeter pump looks a lot different than this one does. This is a section of hose taken from our new um, elliptical peristaltic pump that's currently undergoing very, very successful long-term trials. A few things to note about this, about this, this uh, hose, which is that the, the wall at the fold point is thinner than for a conventional pump here and here on the side, and the wall on the top and the bottom is very, very thick when compared to the conventional pump. So this provides two advantages. One is that upon folding a thinner sidewall, the um, stresses are lower, and the, in addition, the thicker upper and lower walls mean that the fold angle is much much less than is required for a conventional pump. What does this mean? It means that we can run this pump at least one third faster than any other 100 millimeter pump on, in continuous duty uh, applications. It means that this hose will last considerably longer than a conventional hose. It also means that this hose will run at a lower steady state operating temperature than a conventional hose. So we're quite excited about this development because it gives us the opportunity to make very much larger peristaltic pumps and also operate them at higher pressure and frequency. So I'd like to share with you a few more details about our E100 pump. First of all, before we built this pump, we did extensive engineering, including finite element analysis of the rubber. And we found that the stress in the rubber when it was squeezed was about 50%, one half less than for a conventional pump. You can find out more about our FEA analysis and the rest of the E100 story on our website and you can download our FEA details and so forth but I would also like to take a brief walk through the E100 pump so that people get an idea that it looks the same on the outside but it's substantially different on the inside. So this is a 3D printed model of our E100 pump. It's exactly, it's exactly uh, modeled from the drawings that we used to build the, the actual pump. And you can see that it looks like a conventional pump on the inside. We decided to use rollers to get away from the Stone Age um, uh, shoes that other manufacturers use. We have a, a rotor follower, we have a rotor, and we have our, our elliptical hose, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. And it's driven by a conventional electric motor and, and gearbox. A Couple of things I'd like to point out about this, about the internals of this pump. First of all, the rollers are not flat. The rollers are curved to a special curvature and the casing is also curved. It is curved in a mirror image of the roller so that we're squeezing between two curved sur surfaces and this has several advantages. One is that it keeps the, the hose in the track and the other thing is it allows us to reduce the stress applied to the, to the hose. So I'm gonna take this apart a little bit here and you can see that the hose itself has an elliptical cross-section 
interior cross section and it has a circular outer cross section. So it's elliptical in here, but you can also see that we have a transition to round as we go out so that it just takes conventional pipe fittings to be fitted to a system. I would also like to add that the power required to run this pump, the electric motor, can be considerably smaller, probably one-third less than you are experiencing with your conventional pump. We have also developed a very, very simple, easy means of changing the hose on this pump which will be the subject of an upcoming video very soon. Thank you for your attention.